Today we're talking about how to use the quadratic formula to solve equations. So your essential question is when should I use the quadratic formula to solve an equation? So first of all, the quadratic formula is this right here. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So the reason why the quadratic formula is used is for equations that cannot be factored. So if we cannot factor an equation, which would be the simpler way to find the um, answers, then we would use quadratic formula to find the solutions. So if you think of any equation that is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the number that is by itself, or the constant. So, for example, if we look right here, we have the equation x squared plus 3x equals 2. So, notice if we look at up here, a is the number in front of x squared, b is the number in front of x, and c is the constant, but it needs to be set equal to 0 when we're using um, the quadratic formula. So what we're going to do first is set this equation equal to 0 by subtracting 2 from both sides. So we have x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. So if we try to factor this, if we try to come up with numbers that multiply to be negative 2 that add to be 3, that is impossible. So we could use the completing the square technique that we learned before or we can use the quadratic formula. Now the quadratic formula also works with equations that can be factored. It's just not as fast as factoring. So you can use quadratic formula really any time to solve an equation, um, any kind of quadratic equation, but it's not always the fastest option. So in this case, if we define a, b, and c, a is the coefficient of x squared, which would be 1. b is the coefficient of x, which is 3. And c is the constant, which is negative 2. So now we're going to plug this into the formula that we had for a quadratic formula. And that is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we're going to plug these numbers in for a, b, and c into the quadratic formula and work it out. So we have x equals the opposite of b, which would be negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, and we want to put that in parentheses when we plug it in, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. From here, we're just going to simplify. I like to simplify the part, the part that is underneath the square root first. So we're going to um, simplify this. So we would get underneath the square root, we would get 3 squared, which is 9. And then we have negative 4 times 1 times negative 2, which would be positive 8, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. So underneath the square root, we end up with 17 and then over 2. Now, I cannot simplify this at all. I can't simplify the square root of 17. And so this would just be my answer. Now, because the plus or minus sign is there, technically I have two different answers. But you can just leave your answers like this since it cannot be simplified. So let's try a few more examples of this. So. If I have this example, 6 minus 2t squared equals 9t plus 15. Remember, I want my equation to look like this. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Because then I can factor or complete the square or do quadratic formula. So I'm going to get my equation in that form. So I'm going to subtract the 9t over. And so I would have 6 minus 2t squared minus 9t equals 15. And then I would also subtract the 15 over. And I'm going to rewrite this so that it's in standard form. So I'm going to have the negative 2t squared first minus 9t. And then 6 minus 15 would be 
negative 9 equals 0. So from here, if I try to factor this, I would have to do AC method because there is a number in front of x squared. So I would take negative 2 times negative 9, which is positive 18. And so I would try to find factors of positive 18 that would add to be negative 9. But that is also impossible. So um, I would have to do quadratic formula or complete the square or something like that. Um, so I'm going to find what a, b, and c are. So a is the coefficient of t squared, which is negative 2. b is the coefficient of t, which is negative 9. And c is the constant, which is also negative 9. So I'm going to plug this into my formula. And in case you forgot it, I'm going to write it up here again. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So from here we're going to um, plug this in. So the opposite of b would be positive 9 plus or minus the square root of b which is negative 9 squared and it's important that you plug that in parentheses or you will get a different answer and then minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So if we simplify this, we have, let's simplify the part underneath the square root. So negative 9 squared would be negative 9 times negative 9, which is positive 81. And then we have negative 4 times negative 2, which is positive 8. And then positive 8 times negative 9 would be negative 72. And then all over negative 4. So then if I subtract 81 minus 72, I would get 9. So I would get 9 plus or minus the square root of 9 over, oops, all over negative 4. Now can I simplify the square root of 9? Sure. The square root of 9 is 3. So I would have... 9 plus or minus 3 over 4, negative 4. So what this means is, since these are all like regular numbers, I can work this out. I'm going to have two different answers. Okay, I'm going to have, I'm going to erase this part. I'm going to have two different answers. I'm going to have 9 plus 3 divided by negative 4. And I'm going to have 9 minus 3 divided by negative 4. So if I work these out, 9 plus 3 would be 12 over negative 4, which would equal negative 3. So that's one of my solutions. And then 9 minus 3 would be 6 over negative 4, which reduces to negative 3 halves. So my answers are x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 3 halves. Okay, the next one... Um, remember, I want it to equal 0, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And so I end up with negative x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. So because there's that negative sign in front of the x squared, if I wanted to factor it, I would have to take negative 1 times negative 5, which is positive 5, and I would have to find factors of 5 that add to be 4. But that's not possible, because the only factors are 1 and 5, which add to be 6. So I would have to do quadratic formula. So a equals negative 1, b equals 4, and c equals negative 5. So if I plug them into my formula, I have x equals the opposite of b, so negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So if we simplify, then we have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared, which is 16. And then negative 4 times negative 1 would be positive 4. 
times negative 5 would be negative 20 all over negative 2. And then if I simplify the rest, um, I would get negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 all over negative 2. Now, normally, I could not take the square root of a negative number, but now we've learned about imaginary numbers, so I can simplify this. What would be the square root of negative 4? Well, the square root of 4 is 2, and because I have a negative number, that would be the imaginary unit i. So I would get negative 4 plus or minus 2i all over negative 2. So this can be simplified because I can divide all of these numbers by negative 2. So if I divide everything by negative 2, negative 4 divided by negative 2 would be positive 2. And then I have plus or minus. And then 2i divided by negative 2 would be negative i. So I would have negative i. And so that would be the answer. Now, some people wouldn't like the answer in that form, so you could do this two different ways. You could have, you could split it up from here, and you could have negative 4 plus negative, or I'm sorry, let me erase that. So I could have negative 4 plus 2i divided by negative 2, or I could have negative 4 minus 2i divided by negative 2, either one it all comes out the same thing. So if I divided these, I would get 2 minus i. And then if I divided these, I would get 2 plus i. So either way, this is the same answer as both of these. So you could do it either way that you wanted to. All right, now let's talk about the discriminant. So the discriminant is the part of the quadratic formula that is under the square root sign, which is b squared minus 4ac. That's the part that we take the square root of. Okay? So when we're talking about the discriminant, that tells us how many solutions we're going to end up with. Because if you think about it, if the number under the square root is positive, like 16, then if it's 16, then I can get plus or minus 4 as the answer for this. So I would have two different answers. If the discriminant is 0, then I just get 0. So I only have one answer. But if my discriminant was negative, like on the last problem when it was negative 4, that would equal plus or minus 2i. So I would have two solutions, but they would be imaginary. So here's kind of a chart to help you with this if you don't really understand what that all means. So if b squared minus 4ac, if the discriminant, the part underneath the square root, is greater than 0, which means that it's positive. If the number under the square root sign is positive, then when I take the square root of that number, I'm going to get two answers. So there's going to be two real solutions. And so if I was graphing that, if I was graphing this parabola, it would cross the x-intercept twice, or the x-axis twice. So it would have two x-intercepts like that. Okay, if the discriminant, the number underneath the square root, is 0, when I take the square root of 0, there's only one answer, so there will be one real solution. So then if I were to graph it, it would only cross the x-axis at one point, so there would only be one solution, one x-intercept. If the discriminant is negative, when I take the square root of a negative number, I can get two imaginary solutions, so there would be no x-intercept. So if I was to graph that, that would be something like this, where it never touches the x-axis. Okay? So that's what that means. So we're going to practice finding the discriminant of an equation so that we know in advance how many solutions or how many x-intercepts the graph is going to have. So it says find the discriminant of the quadratic equation and give the number and type of solutions of the equation. So we have to tell if they're real or imaginary and how many there are. So if we do the discriminant, remember the discriminant part is the b squared minus 4ac part. 
the part that's underneath the square root sign in our quadratic formula. So in this case, a equals 1, b equals 10, and c equals 23. So if I do b squared, that would be 10 squared minus 4 times a times c. So I need to decide if this comes out to be positive or negative or 0. So 10 squared would be 100. And then I have 4 times 1 times 23. So 4 times 23 would be 92. So 100 minus 92 is 8. So my answer was positive, which means that if I take the square root of a positive number, there's two regular solutions. So this would be two real solutions for that one. Okay, for the next example, okay, this time we have a is equal to 8, b is equal to negative 9, and c is equal to 11. So if I plug those in, then I have b, which is negative 9, squared, minus 4 times a, which is 8, times c, which is 11. So I just need to work this out and figure out if it's positive, negative, or 0. So negative 9 squared would be negative 9 times negative 9, which is positive 81. And then I have 4 times 8 times 11, which equals 352. So obviously, I don't really even need to figure this out. I just need to know if it's positive or negative or 0. And this is going to be negative. It equals negative 271. So because it's negative, if I were to try to take the square root of this number, I would end up with imaginary solutions because I can't take the square root of a negative number. So this one would be 2 imaginary solutions for this one. Okay, and for the last example, this time I know that A equals 3, B equals 12, and C equals 12. So I'm going to find the discriminant. So I'm going to do B, which is 12 squared, minus 4 times A times C. And I'm going to work it out. So I have 12 squared, which is 144. And then I have minus 4 times 3 times 12, which is also 144. So in this case, the discriminant equals 0. And if I try to take the square root of 0, I just get one answer. I get 0. So this one would have one real solution. All right. Last thing, and then we're finished. Um, there's a formula in physics um, for vertical motion. So this is the formula for the height of an object at any given time that is being either launched in the air or thrown. Okay, um, so H is the height at any given time. So like if I want to know where this ball is at two seconds, then that would be the height at two seconds. T is the time in seconds. V naught is the initial velocity. That's like the um, velocity that it's being launched or thrown at. Um, and h naught is the initial height from which it's being launched or thrown. So if the player's like five feet tall or if the um, you know object's being launched from like a cliff or something like that. So for example, um, let's say we have a basketball player passes the ball to a teammate. The ball leaves the player's hand five feet above the ground and has an initial vertical velocity of 55 feet per second. The teammate catches the ball when it returns to a height of five feet. How long is the ball in the air? So this is like measuring how long it takes to pass the ball, which is kind of important. So um, we have our formula for objects that are being launched or thrown. In this example, we knew our initial vertical velocity, v naught was 55 feet per second. And h naught, which is our initial height, was where it left the player's hand, which was 5 feet. And then um, it says it returns 
to a height of 5 feet. So that's the height at any given time. And it says, how long is the ball in the air? So what variable are we solving for? Well, we're solving for t because we're solving for the time. So we just need to plug in all of this information into our formula and then solve for t. So we would have h, which in this case would be 5, equals negative 16t squared plus v naught, which is 55t plus h naught, which is 5. Now remember, when I was solving equations before, they had to be equal to 0. So I need to subtract 5 from both sides. So I end up with 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 55t, and then this would cancel out. So that would be it. So really, I would have 0 as my c value. So if I use the quadratic formula to help me figure this out so I don't have to worry about factoring and all that, then I would have a equals negative 16, b equals 55, and c in this case equals 0. So when I'm working this out, if I plug it into the quadratic formula, um, and actually I'm using um, t instead of x, so t equals the opposite of b, so negative 55, plus or minus the square root of b, 55, squared, minus 4 times a, which is negative 16, times c, which is 0, all over 2 times a. So you'll want to keep your calculators handy for this one, because we're going to get in some crazy numbers. So if you take 55 squared, we get 3,025. So we have negative 15, or I'm sorry, negative 55 plus or minus the square root of 3,025. And then this is just going to all multiply out to be 0. So really it's just plus 0 or minus 0, but that doesn't matter. And then all over 2 times negative 16, which would be negative 32. So if we take the square root of 3,025, We get 55 because it was 55 squared. So we would end up with um, t equals negative 55 plus or minus 55 all over negative 32. Now I can work this out and get two different solutions. So I would have negative 55 plus 55 over negative 32, and I would have negative 55 minus 55 over negative 32. So if I work this side out, negative 55 plus 55 is just 0, and 0 divided by negative 32 is 0, so that would be 0 seconds. Well, it's impossible for the past to take 0 seconds, so this would not make any sense. So then my other option is going to probably be the correct answer. So if I take negative 55 minus 55, then I would get negative 110 over negative 32. So if I divide that, then I get approximately 3.4 seconds. So that's how long the players took to pass the ball was 3.4 seconds. So that was probably a pretty long pass. So for um, the summary, just make sure that you go back and you answer the essential question from the beginning, which is when should you use the quadratic formula.